Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. This is going to be a live stream and recorded video that is going to be dedicated to, as the title suggests, making static meshes. And this is utilizing the standard meshes and the um, BSP geometries to combine shapes together and actually make the um, them into an actual static mesh with collisions we can place into our maps. So, make a quick announcement to everybody on Discord. Stream is live. Okay, so, with that being said, and Discord's pretty quick for getting those uh, uh, notifications out because uh, my phone just beeped saying that it already went out. I am, while we're doing this, cooking a roast. So, to get started, the first thing I want to do to, to set up this example is I'm going to go ahead and we have our beginning section right here, the floor. I'm not actually going to use that. I'm going to create my own. So what I'll do is I'll come over here to geometry, grab a box, drop it in there. And from there, we'll go ahead and we will shape this to be the same size that we want for our base platform to start off with. So with that, we'll go ahead and change our sizes to 1,000 by 1,000 by 50. And I want to change my location because now the center of this is the center of where we're going to be. Change our location to 0, 0, and 0. And if we look at our floor, starting floor that we came out with is actually 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000. But if we click on it, it's also there. But we have some control of it. We made it. It's ours. So I'm going to take that floor, and I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And since this is a BSP, if we move it, we don't have to change or do anything with our lighting. Welcome, Jay. Alrighty, so with this, and yes, I created it blank because I created this project with no content whatsoever. This is a brand new fresh project and let's go ahead and set it up to work since we don't have a player to start with. I'm going to go ahead and move my player start out of the 0, zero location. And there we go. Move all this junk down below it so we don't have to look at it while we're moving stuff around. Or, accidentally click on the wrong thing. Doesn't matter where they're placed for right now. Alright, with that being done, let's go ahead and jump right in and add a third person set, set up to it. So we'll hit add new, add features, we're going to go ahead and add third person, add to project, and that's done. And content packs, let's go ahead and add the starter content because we're going to use those along the way. And some of this you may have already seen on other videos, but I want to make sure that um, this was covered in this video as well. So, come on, snap to it. Come on, you're almost done. So once the starter content finishes and adds to the project, I'll go ahead and set up my basic normal f uh, folder structure. And there we go, we're done. So I'm going to close starter content we have our third person. We're not going to actually use anything that's in here except for the actual game mode. Um, and then with that, we're going to move everything around and get it to where the, uh, the folder structure is where we need it. So I'm going to go ahead and make my starting folders. And we're going to go with a character folder. We're going to create a maps folder. Because that's where we're going to save all our maps. I don't know if you kind of got that or not, but maps is a good place to actually put your maps. Um, we're not going to put anything in, in here just yet, but we are going to go ahead and add the blueprints. And then grab a new folder, and we're going to call that modes. If you get in the habit of setting up your folder structure early and getting organized early, things will work out. I'm actually going to grab my third person character and I'm going to bring it over here to my blueprints folder and I'm going to actually 
copy here and then I'm going to go ahead and rename that by hitting F2 to my player underscore base and in here also we've got a third person uh, game mode I'm going to drop that into our modes folder and now we don't need anything else from third person um, BP folder itself so you're good you're gone and force delete and if you look it saved everything we'll do a save all go ahead and put our map into there and our map we're just going to call test map sounds good right Let's check our world settings third person game mode and default pawn class is going to be player underscore base so those things are done we can actually get into actually doing what we're, we set out to do so for this example um, one of the, or this video one of the examples I want to use is a fence system and uh, I kind of touched on before how you can do the, the things in different ways I'll create a couple different types of fences to get started with and these are something you can place all around your map you can position them rotate them and do whatever you need to with them but I'm gonna set up a perimeter around the outside of of here and show you what it's gonna look like and since we did this in 1000 by 1000 it lets me wrap my head around a little bit about my object placement a lot better so let's start off with the regular items so I can grab a cylinder and we want to resize this so it looks like a fence pole for one of these fancy guard rail systems or railing systems you'd see inside of a shopping mall with glass and chrome and everything else so we'll go into our details panel and we're going to go to 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 by 1.2 we're probably going to change that around a little bit but let's change our height now to 75 let's actually change it to 1.1 see how that looks change our position to 0 and 0 let's actually walk in here and take a look a little bit big in diameter so we're gonna go ahead and change that to a 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 and now take a look at it it's a little bit more realistic size wise um, yeah that'll be good and to make it shiny and pretty in Chrome let's go ahead and go into our our starter content materials metal chrome and apply and now we have a pretty little chrome pole alright so we're gonna go ahead and grab this one now I know where I'm gonna place these and if we put it right here at 500 which is going to be the outside edge it's going to overlap a little bit so we're going to want to go with 495 by 495 and we're going to keep our 75 that's going to put it right there on our edge and not fall off so good enough and now I can actually do control C control V and grab the new one and actually change its coordinates to negative 495 and it goes to right there and in this example what I'm going to do is I'll create um, a boundary system to go all the way around but we can actually leave off you know the, the middle sections or can actually go ahead and do to where this one goes all the way to here leaves us a 200 wide gap so that we can walk through we'll make a little bridge and then whatever but not really that important I'll just show you the example of how to set it up for um, making it look right so I'm going to add one more in and we could put that back at our zero point and if we're trying to make it equal as well I would say go ahead and create another one and sometimes it doesn't want to control V whenever it's supposed to so to get it to split the difference between the two we can go to 250 not nah, 150 250 so do that again and drag it over here to negative 250 now again trying to be organized let's go up here click on our test map create a right click create a folder and this is going to be our map junk 
and I'm going to grab everything that is just normal map junk and control left click on them move them in there and then we're going to create a new folder called fence and from there we can actually go ahead and take our pieces that we've created make sure you don't take this box brush and rename it to floor and move that into map junk because we're not going to use that for right now and our cylinders we can go ahead and move into our fence alright so enough fiddling around let's go ahead and add in our glass so what I want to do is I, I can grab a cube and let's go ahead and zero that one out for giggles my OCDs are wonderful aren't they you know that we're going to need to go at 80 on our height we want to change our scale to our X value let's go with 0 0.1 make it kind of thin we can actually make it even thinner 0 0.01 but I'm actually going to go with 0 0.05 give it a little bit of thickness to it we could even make it smaller which I'll do that go ahead and do it three and our height we want a, a 0.9 for our Z and let's go ahead and find out what our actual uh, hmm. I love when I put things in the wrong spot okay so we want to go ahead and get that position on our 495 on our correct axis our x-axis and split that in the middle and try to get as close as we can for now and our y-axis we're gonna go ahead and try two we we know it's gonna be small so let's try 2.9 too big 2.5 is perfect actually a little bit too long so we'll bring it down to two point three and too small trial by error 2.4 so this looks good it overlaps a little bit into our uh, our post here and you see it's not going to want to snap correctly so we're going to uncheck that for our snapping and get it to adjust just right now the glass walls with a bridge to the other platform so should yeah platform should good can you make a building on the other platform yeah I can actually make the other platform a building so I'm gonna go ahead and assign the texture or the material and there we go so what we've done now is we're gonna leave this in the way it is because we're gonna come back to it we're gonna control C control V and then we're going to change this to negative 375 so bring it over here which is actually 372 but and we're gonna work on both of those and by doing that what we're gonna do is have this one we're gonna go ahead and combine all of them together to make a solid post section with all three now that we have them combined actually I need to go back in I forgot a folder and we're gonna call this assets and inside here we're going to create a new folder called fences go in there and then we can right click on this since we have the three pieces we want and we want to convert actors to static mesh then we can go to our assets folder and fences and we're going to call this glass main and click OK and there we've got it and now we want to come over here and let's grab doesn't matter which way we go this one and this one but not the other pole just these two pieces and I want to go ahead and right click on those and convert actors to a static mesh do the same thing here and go to our assets and our fences and we'll call this glass part and then we can go ahead and delete everything off of here we don't need any of these things on our map now 
because we've created them as a static mesh. So now we have a static mesh we can actually go into, we can see it, we need to add some collision to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is now you can see we have three different materials applied to it. If we said we wanted to change this material right here to gold, we could do that. Or we could change it to copper, wood, whatever we want to change it to. We have the ability to go back later and change the material so we can make new custom fences. Yeah, some OCDs are not a bad thing. <laughs> Try to pick up good habits now, and it'll just fall into place later. So we want to add our collision. So I'm going to click on Collision up here on the top. And for this particular one, I'm going to do a Simplified Collision 26 DOP. And it creates a collision box around our item. And save and close it. And I'll show you the difference here is I'll go ahead and I'll grab this one, throw it in the map, and I'll grab, we'll do a save all here. And we'll grab this one and throw it in the map. Now you can see they're going to stick to the ground a little bit because, well, that's Unreal Engine 4. So we can actually adjust our height. And let's put it back at 75. And we'll do this one at 75 as well. Because that's how we had them initially laid out. If we had them on zero axis, it'd be different. See, now it wants us to do our lighting and reflection captures because we've added actual static meshes in instead of BSPs. See, this one has collision, so I can walk into it and it's going to stop me. This one, however, does not. So when you first create them, they're not going to have collisions. So go into our glass part, same thing, collision, and we'll do 26, save, and done. Now when we go back into it, we have solid pieces. And I'm going to fix something really quickly that bugs the living crap out of me. Not everybody has this problem, but whenever you go to play, I still have a mouse cursor. And I can't do anything. I can wail on the keys all day long, but I can't do anything until I left click into the scene, and then I can move around. So I hate that. It bugs the crap out of me. I don't know why it's been doing that since 4.19, but we're just going to go to Blueprints and Open Level Blueprint. Another thing to get in the habit of doing as well is when you're creating background sounds and stuff like that, start off with a sequence because if you want to create a loop for your sound, then you can just come off of your sequence and do that off of then one. But I'm going to come off of then zero and we're going to do a set input to game mode only. And then I'm just going to move that over here and we're going to get player controller slap that puppy up in here grab off of this one set show mouse cursor gonna leave it unchecked connected to here and that's gonna solve our little problem of having that stupid mouse cursor every time we hit play so now that works so now if we want to lay out a fence we have this one right here let's get rid of it for right now and this particular one right here, let's go ahead and go with, um, this is where we had it before. So that's not going to work because it's putting this in an offset location. So it's going to be a little bit weird to work with now. Not sure how it chose to do that, but oh well. So we can come over here and you can either use a, that that sticking thing called mathematics and measure and coordinate your, your placement but I'm not gonna <laughs> so now if we look in our, our fence folder it's empty so I'm gonna grab our glass part and I'm gonna move it up into our fence folder and we're gonna work from here so now control C control V and paste another one in and just slide it over and then when you place it just line it up so that um, the glass pieces overlap and then you control V grab another one in now, where it becomes fun is if you want to actually terminate it and end it off somewhere, you can bring in this one and set your height correctly. And we want to set our, we know it's going to be 495, and then just slide this one over to terminate it on the end. As you can see there's a little bit of a gap there because our placement isn't perfect. You can always just grab them slide them over, make your adjustments, but there we go. We got a nice little 
classy fence we can walk around and keep us from falling off the map. Or if we're on a second floor looking out over a balcony. And it's kind of cool, you know? You get the glass fence look. But let's go ahead and... I'm going to drop this one out and this one out. And we're going to actually drop this one out. Control-C, Control-V. And let's get into an example of using the... Um, the BSP geometry is to make a static mesh. So we want a little bridge that we can use to get across and we'll make something out, out over here. So let's go ahead and grab another geometry, a box, and we're going to go ahead and set it to our X we'll make as 500. Our Y we'll make 200 is fine, and then 50 for our Z, we're going to go ahead and 0, 0, and 0, and then we can just drag it on over. We know that it's going to end off at 1250, right? No, um, yeah, 750. Yeah, I don't like that math stuff. So that's why putting things off of the zero axis and building off from that lets you be more precise in laying out your items. And run that at zero. So now let's go ahead and I want to build a building. And what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to start off with another box, and I'm going to go ahead and zero it out. We're going to go with um, our X is going to be. It's going to be a small house. 1,000 by 2,000. And we'll start with 50 just so we can match it up and line it up for now. And then we want to go ahead and change this value to 1,000 or 1,500. There we go. Because we're, we got 500 from the center to here. And then 250 to the center of this one. And then, yeah. Mass stuff. Don't like it. So how tall do we want our building to become? Um, well, first off, we're going to rename this one to Bridge. And this one is going to be our house. Now, it's not much of a house just yet. So let's give it some height. Um, let's go with 600. We'll see how that looks. And we'll go ahead and bring it up here so that it matches up. And if you're unsure on using that math stuff, you can always just come over here and, and do the eyeball to get close. And then go ahead and give your mathematical number to it. So you look, we can be at 274. Five will get us perfect. So now we can put you back over at 1500. And there we go. Everything's perfect. So now we need a door. We need a way of getting into the actual place. So let's go ahead and grab us another box. And before I get really, really crazy, save all and save current. Okay. I have auto saves turned off. I always turn it off. So now what we want to do is with our BSP that we've just created, it's going to create a box. We don't really want a box, but let's go with um, 250 for our height. We'll go with 150 for our Z value and let's go with our X value of actually let's go with 30 I'll explain why 30 here in just a second because when we have our house we can click on hollow and that's going to create it as a hollow house and if I do my wall thickness of 50 that's 25 on this side 25 on the other side and the wall actually is, is only going to be physically 
25 thick. So if we do 30, it's going to give us a little bit of an overlap. So we can just bring our door frame here, change it from additive to subtractive, slide it in until we now have a door. We cut a hole in the wall. So let's go into play mode, walk across our bridge, and yay. It's not perfect. Um, we're going to have to come back and compensate for the fact that um, we did things. So let's grab our house and get to where we can see it. Bring our floor up and match our floor with the level of everything else. Yes, typically it should only be by how the thickness of our floor. So now if we look at it, we can walk straight across the bridge and go right in. And we probably need to go ahead and put some bridge pieces up to keep us from falling off into nothingness. Now, grab that, rotate it 90 degrees. Of course, it's not going to be quite enough to do by normal means. And if you grab it and you try to, to stretch it out, what's happening is, is it's making it but it's also making it thinner across that section and that looks ugly so we can just take it and I'll use our transform for our movement and we're going to do that make sure we're set on 75 and bring it back over here it's going to not be perfect. We should actually make our bridge a little bit wider to compensate for that, but I'm not going to get nitpicky right now. Um, yes, I am. I'm always nitpicky. Uh, so, we're at ne negative 95. I'm just going to go ahead and do it at negative 100 because I would come back and make this bridge a little bit wider. Now, you're going to have a gap here, and with that gap, all you have to do is bring in either a BSP or a regular cube, drop it in there, turn it into a glass panel and you're good. And then we can control C and control V, grab another one and just line these two up. But we don't have to because we created one called part, which we can go ahead and negative 100, 75, do a rotation of 90, and then go ahead and drag it where we need it to, and there we go. And then grab both of them, Control C, Control V, and drag it over here, and set my placement of it to 100. Grab this one and this one, make sure they're lined up perfectly so we can do a negative 100. Okay, so that's good. We're gonna pretend that we actually put our glass there to, to make up the difference. So we have a bridge, we can walk across the bridge without falling off and walk into our house. House seems like it's a little bit tall, so I'm actually going to lower the roof line in the, on the inside. So let's grab our house. I'm actually going to grab these guys, throw them back up there in the fence. And I can close these folders down so that they're not getting in the way. And I'm just going to throw that in map junk and we're gonna call that one our door opening door cut out alright so with our house let's lower the roof line down we know that our door is 250 let's actually go with um, hmm, we did 600 the good thing about using it without textures for right now is each of these big squares is 100 by 100. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 600 tall. So if we bring it down, let's actually walk inside and look at it and see how far down we really want it to be. Because our character standing here, we're going to represent it might be 6 feet tall. So we could actually do... Wow, we could actually do... 3... Let's go with um, 350 and make our adjustments from there. We'll click on house, change our Z to 350. Problem we're going to run into though is let's go with three. Go with 400 to compensate for the fact that we have 
25 thickness for our floor and for our um, uh, yeah our floor thickness so I'm just gonna keep moving this down get it close and then manually enter the numbers in so we're gonna go back to 0 and 200 take a look at it see how we look that's a bit more realistic for a ceiling alright looks good let's go ahead and save that and then we'll go on to if, if you're trying to make something with a, a specific theme then you can create your house however you wanted to I'm just gonna throw in some some basic details in fact I'll go ahead and do a I'm gonna save doing a lighting build just yet because I'm gonna add in a couple windows and once you get the basics done then you can go back and decorate a few things and then save it as a static mesh you'll still have your flexibility of changing materials but at least you're gonna have a basic form to work with so we'll grab another since we're working with our BSP geometries we're gonna stick with them and what we want here is a good size window we're gonna try to put our Z height at 150 um, our X and I'm getting my X and Y because of the little piece right down here in, in the uh, the corner and you can see that there's an X going in this direction and a Y is going in this direction so my X I'm actually gonna do hmm, for X for a wall thickness is 25 again I wanna go ahead and do that as 30 so we're a little bit thicker than the actual wall itself and this is just going to be a cutout um, 200 let's actually make it 300 wide nice big big thing here change it from additive to subtractive and now wherever you place that is going to be your window opening and just kinda adjust it to just poke through now remember the the grid 100 is about waist high for our, our player so let's walk back in here and take a look because remember we're we're almost two full units high so if we're gonna look out the window that puts the window right, right around waist high so we can either adjust it to the outside but we're gonna adjust that to the inside and we're gonna bring that up to where it matches our lines on the inside so we can use these lines as a grid reference to know how high or low to put things at first so then we can look our Z is now going to be 200 and with that we're at 390 and we can do well that didn't work out the way I wanted to so we can just go ahead and position our window I don't know midway through if you want to be precise and do your, your math, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost nine full blocks. So we can just kind of split it up. And this is where you can either do math or you can just eyeball it and just get it to where you like. And I'm actually going to do 550 because then I can do Control C and Control V and change this to a negative 550. and now I've got one on the other side so we could sit here and spend hours and hours and hours detailing out all these BSP geometries to create these these really cool houses um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and even put glass in it just because um, grab another box and I'm sure what happens when you do this so you can correct your size wise so that it looks just right we know that our box brush to our regular box brush is 30, 300, 150. So I'm going to match those numbers right there. And let's go with 30, 300, and we said 150. And that is exactly the same size as that so really and truly we could actually just grab one of our windows 
and control C, control V. And now that we have that, if we go ahead and change it back to additive, it plugs the hole. Let's go ahead and change our material to glass. Now it's not gonna let me do it right off the bat. So I'm gonna left click on one of the faces, come to geometry, select, select all adjacent surfaces, and I want to make this glass. So there we go. Now what's going to happen though is even the walls over here are going to be glass as well. So what we need to do is resize it just a little bit and I can go ahead and do that by coming back up to my panel here, click off and click back on it again so we get these dimensions. So let's actually make it a little bit thinner. Let's make it 20 Make sure let's make it 10, so it's a, well, it's thick glass. Make it 5. But still, where the glass is touching is going to cut out on our, our geometry. So all you really need to do is come back by 1. So if we do 299 and 149, it's just enough to take it off of there, but not enough to, to be a gap where you can see through. So that's pretty good and we can do the same thing for this window over here it's easier to do it that way than try to move it and position it and that kind of stuff so just control C and control V and then with our new one change it to additive we want to go ahead and click on the face and if we just did one time it should work so we'll try it that way we told it to be glass. We can click off, click back on it again, and we'll go ahead and change our dimensions to 5, 299, and 149. And there we go. We have glass pane windows. But we can't see through it. You can see through one side, but not the other. How cheaty is that? You just created a window you can see through one direction, but not the other. I'm not going to give you any. any dirty little tricks on that. I used to do this in other games and what we would do was create these false walls like that. You could jump through if you knew how to jump just right to get behind it. You could shoot out but nobody could shoot in so you have these little secret death rooms. So left click on the face, select all adjacent surfaces and now there's two uh, materials applied to it. So just come back over here and on the one that says none click the arrow. So now we should have glass for both windows. I'm going to go ahead and apply materials to this building and then we're going to save it as a, um, a static mesh and then I'll show you how what happens whenever you do um, that as well. So let's look at the inside. I can click on one face at a time and by clicking on the inside I'm going to go ahead and and put on a nice tiled floor not that one, I don't like it. Actually, let's give it a wood floor. Now, I clicked on it, but I don't like the lines coming straight up and down this way. So I can actually come down here, I click on rotate 90 degrees, and I just turned it the other direction. So if we wanted to do wood floors, that would be good. And then we can come out here and like, well, this wall, I want it to have kind of a, a stucco look, maybe. Click on it and take a look. That's well, not bad if we're trying to create something like for a desert scene or something like that. Now, you want to go around and do that for each individual one separately. Just so you get each one set up the way you want. And each one of these is becoming a new section. So whenever you do that, and you go to the static mesh, it's going to, well, it's going to work for you. So click on this. And you can actually cheat a little bit too. If you click on this right here, you can come in and do the same thing. Select all adjacent surfaces, display, and go ahead and tell all of it to be the same texture. And then come back in. That way it's going to take care of your everything but your windows. So if I click on this, there's nothing there. So I need to address that face separately. But if I do this, I should fix the window. Because technically speaking, it's a whole new thing. So select 
select all adjacent and there we go we just fixed our windows so now we can come back in change our floor we can make our floor wooden again no we're not going to make our uh, <coughs> you know America great again we're just going to make our floor wood again if you want to change the inside wall textures you could um, we're going to change the roof texture as well to wood yeah, just because and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so it matches the direction the floor is going so now we can come over here and look we have this and what I'm going to do is I'll probably translate those two windows over to the back side as well just because so we have that one through that one should be all four of those and if we look at our our values here I mean our location is that so whatever control C and control V so we just made a copy of them and let's go with dragging them over until they just break through we'll take a look make our adjustments and there we go so now we got windows going through both sides of the house if we wanted to we can go ahead and put windows in on both sides what have you but again go ahead and grab all of our house stuff we want to make a new folder called house because we're going to now get ready to convert this into a static mesh so let's take a look at it after we save save all save current and let's do a quick lighting build and I'll show you what happens when well I don't want to do a lighting build until after I do the the static mesh so if I grab this and shift left click it should select everything we should have all our parts now is combined into one and now instead of being able to right click on it and then well the option is not there it's actually going to be down here in your details panel and you scroll down you may have to open up this arrow that was right there and you'll have an option here for create static mesh and this is under your brush settings hey Lex so create static mesh go to our assets we don't want it to be a fence so our asset folder we'll go ahead and come back in and let's create a new folder houses put it up and then we'll go ahead and create static mesh put it in the right folder and we'll just call this one house underscore zero one that'll let us come back in and make multiple versions of it now it's already there it is a, a static mesh and again what's gonna happen is no collision so we're gonna have to go back into it and here if you look at our collision again there is no simple collision uh, and here's another example of show complex collision is going to show you everything floors to walk on the windows everything is going to be there so I'm actually going to uncheck both of those and what will happen is if you apply this um, 26 D0 DOP or whatever the hell it is and then save and then you show your collisions again it's showing the outside perimeter but let's find out if it actually let's move this crap over to here so we can get a fresh tab now let's see what happens can we walk into our house no it won't let us go in so unfortunately we're gonna have to use a little bit different collision type so I go back to my collision and remove collision go back to our collision hmm. yeah I don't think any of these are really gonna work well for what we need without applying uh, multiple different types of collisions but and this is one thing that I really hate doing but works if you scroll down to your details panel to your collision section collision complexity you come down to use complex collision as simple not always the best way to do things but it works you don't want everything in your map having complex collisions but now we can walk into our house we get the nice little windows we can look out everything looks great um, now I'm gonna go ahead and do a lighting build but first let's give our yard some grass 
grab the materials, ground grass, and apply it to that. And our bridge, let's actually make that. Yeah, whatever, that looks good. So there we go. We at least have something to look at for texturing wise. You can see it reflecting off the glass there too. It's kind of weird. So we'll do a lighting build. I'm actually going to do a full build and let it do its thing. So while we're looking at this, does anybody have any questions on setting up um, static meshes out of um, BSP geometries or out of regular like boxes and so forth? I do want to show one more little little trick, and, um, and it's a stair trick that I use. So let's look at it. Our lighting is going to be horrible for right now because we don't have any interior lighting. But we can walk into our building. You see our character looks a little bit on the odd side. But actually looks kind of cool. But um, we walk into the light. You can see. You can change your lighting position and so forth. But leave that up to you. If you want to add interior walls, you could do that before you create it as a BSP geometry. Or while you're still in the BSP mode. Um, and that's one way to go about it. You know, talk about BSPs and how to work on them all day long. Because, I mean, just something really quickly, I'll grab a BSP box, drop it in here. Now, you see what happened is I'm, I have my, my material selected. I'm going to delete that. But what if we wanted to do just um, the tech hex pulse? Whatever material we have selected in here, when we drag it into our world, it's going to have that material already applied to it. So if we wanted, uh, oop, we didn't want to do that. You can drag the material directly to it as well, but um, you drag your box in, and it'll already have the material applied to what you want. If you don't want to put one on there, just click out of the materials folder, and then when you click back into it, you'll have your regular unskinned version. What I tend to do also is, knowing that the scale is set up a certain way, I will actually take it and stretch it to 500 by 500, or if I want a street to be 700 by you know, 700 wide or whatever, I'll grab a BSP geometry, I'll slap it in there, scale it to where it looks right for the width of a road, and then I use these as rulers to drop into the map, and I just rename it something that I can remember as, as that. Let's grab our house one throw it in our house folder. Looks like a good place for it. So with our box right here, um, if you come over to right here, Geometry Editing, you can come in here and you can grab a face and you know, you, you've got options of things you can do. Um, but what I really wanted to work with is I grab this corner right here, this little vertice, the vertices, and I'm going to grab this one right here and I can actually take this and I control left click to grab the second one and I can actually modify our, my BSP geometry to take on a different shape. Um, if I wanted to do the same thing with this one and this one and now move that over and grab this one and this one and like, let's move that one down. And you can do that. Do whatever changes you want. You can create a... Since right here where you've got new options, you can actually delete a face. Um, you can create one. You can split it. You can weld. Um, you got different modes you can work with. You can extrude, that kind of stuff. So if I had all four of them selected... Now I can drop them down this way. Uh, I don't like that one point being there, but I can grab one point at a time. And I can go ahead and just move that particular one wherever I want. So you have full control of dragging these the dots of your your BSP. And you can create some, some funky stuff. Now, it's going to be weird when you try putting materials on, because now you have... I'm going to go back into my regular mode, and I click on it, and now you see it's split across there. I start putting materials on, and let's go with um, concrete grime, and then you put it on there. You're going to have your materials going to be split, 
that actually didn't look too bad, but sometimes it can be off by a little bit. So you can actually grab your pan tools and shift your material over. If you watch the material itself, I can actually move it around and based on which one. 256 is really small. Quarter is like a quarter at a time. So you can play with it to line it up just right. So you got a lot of options. You can modify the crap out of your, your even a simple box BSP. Move it around, change the points around. You can go back into your editing mode and I mean edit right here yep. experiment with it and, and see what you can do grab a point here and let's um, create you know don't be afraid to experiment with it you screw it up control Z is a nice little undo button I mean you can create whatever you want. I've actually created ships by doing this. I'm going to go back to my regular mode. And I don't have a material on it, so I click on it again. And I'll go ahead and finish applying my, my material to it. And I see I added another phase to it there. So you can do whatever you want. You can make ships. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, the reason why you don't want to use complex collision all over the map is because it'll start loading things up and it's part of like level draws and renders and things of that nature the whole point of it is uh, is trying to generate all these collisions all at one time because we don't have levels of detail set up in anything yet and we're just on a really small tiny map for right now but like I said, you could use that, that feature and create your own sculpture and rocks and so forth I'm actually going to dump that one. I'm going to show you the stair trick, and then I'm going to call it quits for this video. If you guys want more on this same topic, let me know. <coughs> <coughs> ah, I am trying to cook a roast and do other things at the same time. So I'll show you my stair trick. So using your, your geometry, let's grab a set of stairs, and I'm going to drag that into the map. And... I want to make it 15 steps total um, step length. I'm actually going to change it to 50 because that looks awesome. And nice little bit wider stairs. And I already had texture. Actually, I'm going to change that. I'm going to go ahead and... Eh, no, that's, that's fine. We can, we can leave it the way it is. Doesn't matter the texture of what we're trying to, to do here. I'm actually going to do... 12 steps 40 on the length let's go ahead and do the 50 on the length and step height is fine you can actually move it to 30 but the default is is smooth and you can actually walk up and down it pretty quickly and pretty easily so there we've got a nice little set of stairs but what if you want to create floating stairs I mean the material as it's applied to it looks kind of junk because it's not all one material, it's individual layers per step. So I want to make a floating set of stairs. I'm going to grab my, my stair that I've already got selected over here in the details panel, or in the world outliner, and I'm going to control C and control V to make a copy of it. I'm going to change that from additive to subtractive, and then what I'm going to do is bring it over a little bit, and line it up so that it the line from this step goes straight down into the invisible so you then created a full set of floating stairs that way what I also recommend doing is changing your number of steps down one so if I was at 12 I can go to 11 so now everything underneath the stairs is gone except for you can see where it's cut into and painted the grass two ways you can go about that you can actually put um, the material down to match the material that's on the ground or you can go up from 45 to 46 that wasn't enough 47 and you just keep trying to do that but the other thing is to go ahead and convert it into a static mesh um, I can grab both my stairs at the same time and then I can drag it up into the air 
And you see, we have this beautiful little set of stairs that I will go ahead and create as a static mesh. And for right now, I'm just going to throw it in the root folder. And stairs is what I'm going to call it. Create static mesh. So there, we have our stairs in here. And now, whenever we're going to put it back down, it's not a problem. 45, it's like the the invisible version just disappears. Now we do need to change our, our collision so we can go into our assets folder and here again we can go to this one and we can do collision and try our 26 yeah that's not gonna work so you can experiment with it if you do one you don't like it you can just remove your collision go back and try a different one um, No. Um, and again, you can always go back and just do like I was doing before. And and I think that's what I'm going to do for the speed of things for right now. Because it will probably work better since you just want it to work. Use complex collision is simple. Save. Close it. Now I can go in here and I can walk up and down my stairs. I can walk underneath them as long as I got headroom for it. So it doesn't interfere with the actual ground and, and materials and stuff around it. So that's an easy way to make a set of floating stairs. I thought that was cool. Alright guys. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab my stairs. And again, like I said, if you're trying to create a, a scene and you want things you can replicate quickly and drag them and move them around the map and and so forth so you have more to do and you can get back to designing the terrain figure out okay I want um, this house to have a second floor or, or the, you can only get to from the outside and yeah yeah I mean if you want to create um, little things like a, a, a puddle effect then um, you could actually grab your box go into the uh, the editing mode and make it whatever shape you want it to be I'm actually for right now I'll go ahead and do a little cheap trick here and it's not going to work right off the bat but I'll grab my concrete grime I'm going to go ahead and grab in a cylinder going to set the um, Z to about 20 um, you can actually set the sides to 20. We're going to make a round mud puddle. Uh, this is where it's not really going to hurt it too bad if you want to do some of that stuff. But I'm going to change my outer radius to 100. And let's go ahead and move it down to where it's just into the ground a little bit. And change it to subtractive. Since our um, terrain here was actually a... Um, a BSP geometry, we can drop this in here and we just create a butthole. A little divot in the ground that we can put in there. Or you can make bomb craters that you can just sprinkle all over the map just however you want to. Um, if you want to add water into this, that's a little bit different. I'll get into that uh, in another video, but um, just quickly created that little thing right there, but you can make it whatever shape you want, make the actual bomb crater or mud puddles and so forth. You could add sound. As soon as you step in it, you hear a squishing noise or whatever. I mean, there's so many things you can do and make terrain stuff. In, I didn't make that a static mesh. I just threw that in as a BSP geometry. I gave it the concrete grime from the starter pack, and it kind of looks like a dirty hole that was cut out. And that was it. I didn't have to do anything fancy or special. So, any questions before I call this one quits and go check on my roast? I'm using an electronic crock pot or pressure cooker, so it, it's timed and automatically cuts off on its own. So it's not going to be burning. It, it'll shut itself off. But I need to go check the, the veggies that I put in there also. The meat was almost done the last time I checked it, so it should be lovely. So, all right. 
I'm going to call it on this video, and you guys let me know in the comments, and let me know on Discord if you want me to be able to do more. And you want to see more on using BSP geometries to make map stuff, making them into static meshes, and things of that nature. So, you guys let me know. Leave a uh, comment here in the, the video, or jump on my Discord and leave me a comment there, and I'll try to get more of these done in between working on the main game project. Alright, so again, I'm going to save all do a quick build and say my goodbyes and get on out of here so I thank everybody for watching this and again this is a request video oh we have wrapping UVs I don't care um, if you have requests I'll try to get to them the best that I can and we'll try to make some cool stuff and some cool features but I figured this was a really cool thing and you guys should enjoy this and should open up your map building quite a bit. And we will see you guys later. Check back in and we'll do this some more.